Okay, we are joined by Utah Valley head women's basketball coach Kathy Nixon. Coach, can you start us off with your general thoughts on the upcoming season? You bet. Um, we're really excited. I think this time of year as a basketball coach, if you can't be excited, you must not have a pulse. But um, very excited. If, I, I think the off season many times is an indication of what the season's going to be like. And if that's the case uh, in our program, we're in for a, a fantastic season. Probably one of the very best off seasons we've had starting in the spring to this past summer and just could not be uh, more proud of the girls, uh, the time they put in uh, to improve and get better and to come together as a team. Uh, the media selected UVU to finish in a tie for fifth, and the coaches picked UVU to finish eighth. What are your thoughts on the difference in opinion? Well, you know, as I did those votes myself, I thought it'd be really interesting to try to predict because I think obviously you can see that we lost a big portion of our statistical contributors with Mariah um, Taylor Christensen and, and Britta uh, Spencer leaving our program. So. Uh, and graduating, so I think it would be really hard to know where to put us, and and that's fair. I I, I think that's good for us. Motivates us, um, gives us an opportunity to maybe surprise some people. Um, I think after we start our season, people have a little bit better feel of of who we are and the talent level we have. We certainly don't intend to finish there, but I think that's a fair estimate if you don't because you would you would know much about our program, considering we lost such valuable players. As you mentioned, you lost your top two scorers in Taylor Christensen and Mariah Seals, but you returned Jordan Holland. Can you talk about losing those two and what it means to return Holland? Yeah, you know, Jordan um, really became that consistent contributor last season, and she does a lot of those intangible things. Um, we give some awards at the end of the year that kind of recognize those, and one of the things I love about Jordan is that she's willing to work on the defensive end. Um, she has to be in the top at least two or three in the country and taking charges. She's just really, really committed to the defensive end. So she has a lot of, of, of experience. She's played a lot of minutes going into her junior year um, and has really kind of become the heart of our team defensively, I would say, for sure. Which newcomers do you think will make the most immediate impact for the Wolverines? Yeah, good question. We're really excited about all five of the girls we have coming in. Um, we have three freshmen from Utah. Um, and they've come along really well, I think exceeded our expectations to this point. We also have uh, two international players, Maria Carvalho from uh, Portugal and Eve Brasslis from Australia. And both of them have played uh, at very high levels, respectively, in their countries and had a high level of success. Obviously, transitioning to another country and all that comes with uh, being integrated into a new program is a challenge. but. Um, honestly, I, I think that all five of those players will factor in. Um, I think Eve and Maria have a little bit more uh, experience at, at level, a level comparable to the Division I level. But uh, with Madison Grange, Emma Jones, and Josie Williams, um, all five of them, I think, will come in and, and definitely make an impact. Um, you opened the season with six straight home games. How do you think that home court advantage will help your team get off to the right start? Well, we're grateful to be at home. Last year it was inverse of that, and we started on the road. And it's, I think it's important for your team to get confidence, and that, that can come in different ways. But uh, we're hoping that being able to start at home against some very good teams will give us a, a measure of where we are. Um, and also, hopefully, we can, we can get some wins and, and be able to, to gain some confidence with a team that is relatively unproven and has quite a bit of an inexperience. Last year was extremely wide open in the WAC with a lot of, com of competitive games. What do you think contributed to that, and do you expect to see that trend continue into this season? Yeah, you know, we were saying that as a coaching staff that it seems like most every year it is pretty wide open. I think you could, um, you know, easily say with with uh, New Mexico State with the the players that they have coming back, with uh, Brooke and, and and Pack that they would be favored, but. I think you can look at all of our programs. We have um, players that we don't know about each other. Um, we've lost some impact players, I think, each of those programs. Um, but absolutely, it's probably uh, more wide open this year than it may have ever been. 
Um, and there's a lot of unknowns. You factor in Cal Baptist into that equation. I think it's going to be really exciting come January to see how, how things play out. Can you tell us a little bit about your coaching staff for this season? You bet. Thanks for asking about that. Um, I was thinking on the plane actually coming in this morning how grateful I am for the, the staff that I have. Um, my associate head coach is Anthony Turner. And if you don't know him, you should get to know him because one of the most quality people and uh, an amazing basketball coach, gifted in so many ways with his interpersonal skills, um, his knowledge of the game and his ability to teach. Um, I tease him that he's all things in psychology and, and basketball wrapped up in one man. But he's, he's a phenomenal person and extremely grateful for him. Returning to our staff, we have Aubrey Henry. Um, she's in her second year with our program. And I think it's important for every staff to have that person that the players can really connect with um, and identify with. Aubrey's not very many years out of her playing career um, and, and adds a whole, whole new dimension to our team. Um, have two new assistant coaches. One is B.J. Porter. He comes from Pepperdine University. He's originally from Layton, Utah, uh, and has had coaching experience on the men's side and the women's side at the collegiate level. And just an awesome man. Um, we were talking last night, uh, and, and BJ said he al already feels like he's family in our program, and that's, that's what I love. Um, we, we do consider our program each other to be family, from our staff to our players. And uh, one really, really special addition for me is the addition of Hiram Aquina. When I played at BYU a long time ago, Hiram was the assistant coach when I played there and has been my friend and mentor for many years. And, He's back as a special assistant on our staff and just has provided um, a, a very needed, wise mentor for all of us. And I, I've had some moments where I've seen him at the whiteboard or seen him on the court with my players and uh, had flashbacks from when I played and just very grateful for him and his influence in my life and, and uh, the opportunity that our players and coaches have to associate with him. Uh, this question comes from Twitter user Elliot J. Marr. What's your team hashtag or motto, and what does it mean? Our, our team hashtag, I guess, we, we, uh, is together and that we are family. Um, we try to connect in many, many ways every single day with one another and feel like the game of basketball is to be played as a cohesive unit. Um, it's, it's always an interesting challenge to integrate different personalities and uh, from coaching staff to players, but like any family, uh, we try to communicate and work through any differences we have. But I feel like that synergy of, of connectedness is what really builds a, a team and builds a family. As student athletes, what do you expect from your players off the court? It's a good question. Um, in our program, we, we have the four C's. My players hear about it a lot, and maybe they think too much, but um, our core values are championships. We're committed to working to win championships. Classrooms, um, we've been very successful academically. We're committed to every girl achieving her pot uh, potential educationally and professionally. Um, we were uh, recognized as the 16th highest GPA in the nation this past year, and that's one of nine total recognitions we've had in not very many years. Um, so championships, classrooms, character, we're committed to, to uh, being quality individuals off the court. Um, service in the community, we do service every month, and um, also to culture, and that's the cohesiveness and the family unit. So we have championship expectations off the court as well as on. Uh, taking a look at your schedule, you've got the five other Utah Division ones on your schedule as well as Idaho State, which isn't that far out of Utah. What's the relationship like uh, between all those coaches and, and how does kind of knowing that non-conference schedule is just there with some easy road trips, whether they're, you're going there or they're coming to you, how easy does that make scheduling a non-conference? Well, the, the coaches in Utah have been uh, very gracious to us. Um, I, I consider my relationship very good with them. I don't know what easy road trip necessarily means. Um, getting there sometimes is easy, but uh, winning there might be more difficult. Um, but uh, I do think it's a, a great measure for us. We have varying levels of conferences and programs in our state, so I think it gives us a great opportunity to kind of measure where we are compared to some very, very good successful teams, um, and hopefully we'll be able to be successful. 
Uh, what would you say is your biggest challenge this year? Biggest challenge? I think kind of what you uh, alluded to earlier with losing a lot of experience. You take the cumulative experience of Mariah and Taylor. You know, Mariah had the most starts, most minutes, most games played of anyone in our program. Um, and Taylor, you know, was such an impact player for us for four years. And I think that's probably the biggest challenge is that at each position we have what I consider to be depth and talent, but um, all of it pretty much is unproven. And that's the exciting part and also probably the challenging part. Okay, Coach, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate it.